once again welcome all my viewers all my followers all my wonderful learners wherever you could be watching me a day like today uh in mafunzo new curriculum television as usual we cater for online learning whereby we cater for grade four grade five grade six grade seven year eight uh, continuing that way and uh, today i want to kick off by having junior school grade eight creative arts and sports and this lesson we are going to have a very detailed creative arts and sports revision so wherever you are watching me take a pen take a booklet so that now you can walk with me as i go over this serious and detailed revision for creative arts and sports i'll have sampled just a few questions which my learners have been posing to me and which i found them very necessary for me to go through them for example question number one what are some of the factors one needs to consider when creating items using that portal technique known as slab technique you remember in portally we have uh, two methods of modeling these are coil technique and then the other one is slab so this learner wants to know some of the factors one needs to consider when creating items using the slab technique uh, and here is my detailed answer when making an item using slab technique it is very important you consider the following factors one function you have to consider the function of the finished item that is the first consideration function of the item to be modeled then number two consider the shape of your item after that go ahead and then decide on the size of the item and don't forget decide on the thickness of your slabs you are going to use thickness of the slabs to be used and finally this uh, think of the method you are going to use in decorating that particular item so those are the four or other five main factors to consider these are function of the item shape of the item size of the item thickness of the slabs to be used and not forgetting the method you are going to use when you are decorating but it is very very important boys and girls before you consider those others consider the function of the item before you go to the shape go to the size you go to the thickness of uh, slabs and also finally the method then <laughs> another sorry wants to know list down any roles of creative arts and sports any role of arts or other creative arts and sports creative arts and sports they create they they, they 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 create i mean they make a very they create a very big role in today living some of these roles are as follows through creative arts and sports we create a sense of identity sense of identity that is through creative arts and sports we bring people together so that now people can experience that sense of community that sense of belonging together two through creative arts and sports we create or rather we promote cohesion through 
teamwork. And this is, this, this is very open. This comes very clearly when we are doing sports. That is, promote sense of cohesion through teamwork. And then the other thing is, the other role of creative arts and sports is, through creative arts and sports, culture is preserved. We are able to preserve our culture and our history. And then through creative arts and sports, it provides us with entertainment through components such as music, dances, drama, narratives, watching movies and films, just to mention a few. And also watching sporting activities like soccer, netball, basketball, just to name a few. And another role is that through creative arts and sports, it provides that platform of employment opportunities. Employment opportunities are created such that there are those who can become artists, there are those who can become musicians, there are those who can become referees, there are those who can become sport coaches, there are those who can, be, who can become sport doctors, uh, trainers, and what have you, and also teachers. Then also, another role is that through creative arts and sports, a country and all can generate, a country can earn, all a country can generate what you call tax revenue. And also, creative arts and sports, it attracts investment, which in turn increases job opportunities. And also, uh, creative arts and uh, sports uh, stimulates the growth of economy through tourism sector. Uh, then there's this other learner who wanted to know, the other learner wanted to know the process of clay preparation. What are some of the stages, the various stages in clay preparation? A wonderful student by the name Anton wanted to know the stages in clay preparation. There are quite a number of stages in the process of clay preparation. And these stages are many, and I want to, to, to mention one after the other. Number one, uh, stage number one is mining. When we talk about mining, we are talking about where the source of clay. And we know very well clay is sourced from the ground. Then the other process is drying the clay. The pieces of clay are normally dried. Once you collect the clay from its source, you are supposed to spread the clay either on a plastic material or on a prepared ground so that it can dry. Then the other process is removal of impurities. Now, when we talk about impurities, we are talking about uh, small stones, twigs, roots, which can cause harm to the person when is uh, clay kneading or when is using the clay. Then the other process is crushing clay, crushing clay. This involves putting the clay in a container, then crush it into small until it becomes fine powder. You put the clay in a container and then you crush it either in a pestle and then you crush it until you make it into fine powder. Then after that, the other process is sieving the clay to remove those impurities. And then there's another process known as slaking clay. Slaking clay involves uh, soaking the clay in water. And then the other process is known as sieving wet clay. Once you soak the clay, you, you must go ahead and sieve the clay. And then there's another process known as hardening the clay. Uh, hardening the clay. Then after that, you go to two other processes which are very important. Clay kneading and clay wedging. Clay kneading and clay wedging, which are very important. Clay kneading and clay wedging, 
they mix clay into a uniform state and also they help to expel any air bubbles that may be trapped in the clay. And remember, kneading is the process of pressing and the mixing the clay with the hands and fingers in order to remove any bubbles from the clay and also at, uh, obtain a uniform consistency clay. And the clay wedging, wedging is done by, uh, by combating the clay. You know, you hit the clay against the hard surface. This is done by hitting the clay firmly on a hard surface like this table. Then you cut it. You cut the clay with a wire or a string to check the moisture content and also uniformity of, uh, uniformity of the clay and also check if there are any pockets of air bubbles which would be trapped inside there. Then after that, it is very important to remember that clay kneading and the clay wedging, they are very important because they prevent the clay from cracking during the filing stage. And then, remember this. The other thing we want to look at is, there's another learner who wanted to know the difference between, the learner has asked me to distinguish between warm and the cool colors. What is the difference between warm colors and the cool colors? I'll begin with warm colors. Warm colors appear bright, cheerful. They are also associated with the sun and the fire. Warm, color, uh, warm colors contain red and the yellow. And examples of warm colors are like red, yellow, and the orange. What about cool colors? Cool colors appear restful and calm. They show calmness. And they are also associated with water and the vegetation. Examples of cool colors are the likes of blue, green, and violet. Then another learner wanted to know, if they were given an assignment to paint as a, an hot bus that was parked in the school garage, which technique of uh, painting are they going to use? Then they were given option. Will it be painting from observation, painting from memory, or it will be painting from imagination? Due to the fact that they are painting the bus which they are seeing parked there in the garage. You look at the bus and then you paint it on a piece of paper. That is what we call painting from observation. The word, obser obser the word observation is derived from the word observe. To observe is to look at something the way it is. Then when you are doing this exercise of painting, you need the following materials. You need a palette to mix the colors. You need water color. You need water. To mix with color with the spotter paint, you need a pencil uh, to draw the shape, the outline of the bus. You need rubber to correct that mistake. You need an eraser to sharpen the pencil in case it breaks down, and uh, you also need a ruler to draw the borderline and uh, such. Finally, another one wanted me to state some characteristics of a mosaic. Remember, mosaic involves using one one type of material to make a picture. In mosaic, we use pieces of one type of a material to make a composition. Those are some of the characteristics. One, in mosaic, we use one type of material to make a composition. Num uh, characteristic number two, the small units of the pasted material are called tesserae, tesserae. And then in mosaic, the pieces are pasted side by side, leaving a narrow gap in between. And finally, in mosaic, we use adhesive to stick. Those are some of the characteristics of a mosaic. One, in mosaic, we use pieces of one type of a material, in mosaic, 
the small units of the pasted materials are called tesserae, and the pieces are pasted side by side, and finally, adhesive is used to paste tesserae.